All right, in this video, I'm talking about a classroom activity for getting students to understand supply and demand. And just to give you a preview, this is going to involve having students write down their valuation for a product and then having them get up from their seats and line themselves up in order of who values the product most versus who values the product least. We'll do something similar with supply curves and the hope is that they're going to think about supply and demand in a particular way. And so in particular, we want to be thinking about the demand curve as being people lined up in order along this axis. So that they're thinking about this as the person lined up first is the person who values the product the most, the person who lines up second is the person who values the product second most, etc, etc, etc. And thinking of demand curves as people lined up in order is just a really useful way of thinking about how the demand curve works. And so here's the process if you're teaching an economics class that will get students to this point and that will get them the kind of understanding of what's going on in a way that they can actually use when they're doing problems. So you start out with a real product and this is just one of them that you plan to essentially sell to one of the students eventually. And you explain to them that you're going to use a second price auction. So you ask them to write down what is the highest amount that they would pay for this product. And to make this actually work out, you can use a second price auction, which of course the optimal strategy in response to a second price auction is to bid your valuation for the product. And you can even have students look that up online to verify, yes, if you're engaging in a second price auction where the person who gets the product is the one who bids the most, but they pay the bid of the person who bid the second most, you can kind of explain that briefly. You don't need to go into it in full detail, you're just trying to get an accurate valuation from everybody about how much they value the mug or whatever you bring to class. And you have them write down on a note card what is their valuation, what is their bid. And at that point, you have them write on the back of the note card, how did they come up with the bid? What factors influenced that number they put down on the paper? And then you can also ask them what factors might have influenced their peers' valuation on their little note card. And at that point, you get them to stand up and you explain to them that you want them to line themselves up in order around the classroom according to how much they value the product, with the person who values it the most on one end of the room and the person who values use it the least on the other end and consecutively in between. And you tell them you're going to time them to see how fast as a class they can do this. And this is best done when there's a little bit of competition. So it could be this is how fast my class last year did it. Or it could be if there's other economics professors teaching, how fast did their class do this? So there's an incentive to move quickly and kind of get the blood flowing. Because of course you learn faster when you get the blood flowing. One of the professors at my school actually once even had students like get up and do exercises just to increase their blood flow to increase their learning. Well, this is actually tied to learning a demand curve and it gets their blood flowing at the same time. And at that point, you can have a discussion with them while they're standing about how they came up with the number on their note card, which they should all be holding with their place in line. And then you sit down and you can go through the demand curve where you're sort of having them think about the demand curve as people lined up in order, just like they did a few minutes ago. And you can actually even graph their numbers. Like you could, you could say, okay, this person values the mug at $8, this person values the mug at $7.50. Actually, there's three people who value the mug at $7.50. Of course, if you use real data from your classroom, this is not going to be a smooth linear demand curve. It's going to be kind of messy and kind of, um, uh, it's gonna look kind of weird like that, but it will be a demand curve. And at that point, they will have an intuition for how the demand curve is derived. Whoops, I forgot to list the steps. So let me list the steps up here now. All right, so just to be clear, first you show them the mug, you explain a second price auction, you get students to write down their valuation on a note card, then you have them align themselves up in order around the classroom, 
then you discuss with them how they came up with their valuations, and then you sit down and you draw a demand curve and explain a demand curve in relation to what they just did. And then finally, you have to get rid of the mug, so you can actually run the second price auction if you want, or if you feel uncomfortable exchanging money with students, you could give it to the student with the highest valuation, or give it to a student randomly, or something like that. So that's teaching them demand. What about supply? Okay, for supply, you're going to have a slide with specifications about freshly baked cookies. You're going to say, I, as the professor, would like a plate of 12 freshly baked cookies, and these have to be three inches in diameter, and they have to be delivered to me at a time that me and the other person have agreed to warm out of the oven. That's what I'm craving. And once again, you have the students write down on a note card, what is the lowest amount of money that you would be willing to supply the 12 cookies for? And of course, you might start this by saying, how many of you would do this, would agree to provide me 12 cookies if I paid you $100 for it? And most likely, most students are going to say, yes, I'd do that for $100, and some of them might not, and you could talk about that if you wanted. But the real trick here is getting them to think about how much money is the lowest amount that they would be willing to supply this for. And to think through that, they're going to have to think through what are the ingredients to chocolate chip cookies? What would they have to buy? What would be the time investment? How much do they enjoy baking cookies? All of that stuff that's relevant when you're thinking about a supply curve. So you have them write on the back of their note card, how did they come up with the number? What is the lowest amount that they would be willing to supply the freshly baked cookies? It's probably somewhere between $5 and $100, and they have to come up with that number. And then, of course, you can get them up and you can say, okay, it took you this long to arrange yourselves a minute ago. How fast are you going to be able to arrange yourselves in order from the lowest price person to the highest price person in the class? And so they're now lined up in order, and at that point, you can talk about the supply curve and how the supply curve is lining the providers, the producers up, in the order in which they're willing to provide the, the batch of cookies. And you can ask them at that point what went into your decision, what leads to the variation across them, because some people enjoy making cookies more, some people don't have access to a car and would have to pay bus fare to actually make this happen. There's going to be a lot of variation among students in their willingness to provide these cookies, and that discussion will give them a deeper understanding of what's going on with the supply curve. Now, one thing that I've done before, which is really fun, especially with freshmen, is you can actually do the first exercise, the one where I was describing the mug, with cookies as well. With the same batch of cookies, how much would you pay for a freshly baked batch of 12 cookies, three inches in diameter, at a time that you and another person agree to, to deliver them? And you can do the same thing with supply. And at the end of the day, you can actually match students up and you can say, okay, these five students were willing to buy it for this price. These five were willing to sell the cookies for this price. I'm gonna match you all up and then you have to come to an agreement about providing these cookies. And that can be a fun way for students to get to know each other. So I've done that before and it's, it's really fun. But the basic idea here is you want students thinking of both supply and demand as lining people up in order according to their valuation for a product and according to their willingness to provide the product and all of the things that each of them has to think about when coming up with their number on their card, those are going to be the things that are going to shift the supply and demand curve, that are going to be relevant when they're considering this in the future. And I also think this is just useful as a way of getting used to how economists think. Because economists love graphs, and so many of our graphs are essentially interpreted as lining people up in order. That's just how economists think. We think about valuations, we think about the, the numbers inside people's heads and inside people's hearts, and then we imagine lining those people up in order. And if you think of many of our graphs, not just supply and demand, but other graphs we have as that kind of thing, you're on your way to understanding economics in a much more intuitive way. So this is just something I do to introduce supply and demand. It's kind of a fun classroom exercise, and most importantly, it gets students up and racing around the classroom, which is a lot of fun.